Okay, hi everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, today, I'm going to be tying a CDC home So I've got bias in the in the bias. Uh, this is what it looks like there, John. It's a very simple fly, so simple, but you could probably tie it you sleep. So I'm going to start by putting plenty of wax on bread. And you give yourself plenty of wax on your thread. And not too far wrong. Uh, there's a material description list. Uh, although there's not many materials. Like I said, I've got um, a size 14 in now. You can go from size 12 to 16 on this. Uh, smaller better so I've got um, a yellow eight or silk in now I think it's made by gossip I'm not sure I'm going to start midway and just use the tag end just to get the thread down touch turns all the way You take that bit off. Now you're going to get a couple of CDC feathers. Just two. Unless they're really bushy ones. And you're going to just sort of stroke the fibers back here. And tie it so that the fibers are right at the back there. Catch it on here. Put seven. She won't catch it right there. And then make sure you catch them both then. Catch them both like this. Um, you're going to just again take the body up in touch turns. Just cover all these, all that material up to just beyond halfway on the shank. cut this bit off but don't throw it away you'll need it later on for a little bit of dubbing so just keep that there on your desk some more again tidy this up and then come back down the shank and touch turns as best you can Take your time, you know, there's no rush with this one. I mean, it's that easy to tie it. I've seen, but I'm not joking, I've seen fellas that tie it. Bro, literally get a little, um, little case out with a vice in there and some tying material and whatnot. And not one of these fellas together, that's where I learned to anyway. You bring these fibers over, but leave a couple trailing. For a tail. So you want to leave the couple of trailing for a tail. And this. And then. Just make sure you've got some. Bit of a tail out there. So you only want a couple of fibers really. Leave your tail. And the rest. Try and keep it on top and sort of bring your thread up in open turns. So you get like an open rib. 
a new effect. I'll take the time with it. No, there's no rush. Keep nice tight thread. And keep plenty of wax on your thread. And when you get to about this point here, what you're going to do and just separate some of these fibers backwards. Like this. Because you're going to sort of form a wing there. You get as much of these fibers as you can. And sort of face backwards this way. And catch that with a turn or two. I know it looks a little bit all over the place at the moment, but don't worry about that. Once you've got, just take this up to the front a little bit more and take this bit off then. You can keep some of that if you want, like I say, for some dubbing shorter. You need a little bit of dubbing. So don't throw that away. And then with this here, what we're going to do is tie it up into sort of a post. So give it a wrap around the back and at the front. Just take a couple of wraps to it, front and back, in like a little post. It's not a massive one, but a little one. Like this. And then we're going to start separating that up. I mean, you can use a bodkin if you want. If you can find a bodkin. And you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just sort of separating them into two wings. You know, it's going to be like a spent wing, so. It doesn't need that many fibers, you just want sort of the impression of a couple of wings on either side. So once you get it that that you're going to do a little figure eight over the top for hold it in the spent wing position I so said take your time there's no rush Brush all that upwards, bring it all up. And so I guess about here where your wing's going to be, you're going to do a little diagonal curve, a little diagonal cut in it. Again, just open them out into wings. And again, we're going to do a little figure eight, but this time you're going to double a little bit of that. Remember, I said save all, all your dubbing. Or well, also, you're going to have to make sure this tail is at a decent length. If you can. Well, it's not too good of a tail, really. I mean, it, well, it shouldn't affect the fly's performance too much, that really. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, I get a tiny bit better tail than that. A few of them fibres that I said, that, and just put them on as a bit of a dub. You just want a little bit of dubbing to look when you put the 
so configure it on this. Just nicely drop down where it should be. See, we've got more of a flare shape to it there now. The tail's still all over the place, I don't like that. But. Yeah, there we go, anyway. and tight which is that tight in this up um I don't know what's happened with me with me with me um focus lock there So you want to put a build a head into it. I said it would be nice and buff like this, didn't I? I mean, it it is a good fly. I mean, it's it's success. I have had plenty of success with that. I've caught one or two good size trout with it. Mark, there you go. A nice simple little fly for you made out of minimum materials and it's called a CDC Humpy. I think it's actually called an Agostino non calo, like a split wing variant. I think that's its proper title but I think it's a simple pattern and it's worth giving a go. And like I said it's it might not make much but it's pretty successful really. It's a successful I haven't had a lot of success with it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe, leave comments and um Let me know if there's any other t other flies that you'd like to see me tie. See you next time.